Okay, so my Flux series started off with this guy, which was basically I um, was trying out my first batch of proper spring steel that I got from Jamie Bell of the Harbury. Uh, he cut some reeds for me, and um, this was the first one, trying out my bender, trying out how I can hopefully come up with something that would be a repeatable shape. Uh, this was an attempt at that, and it became a giant failure at the time. Since then, I've made a few harps, and this is the latest, the latest flux. This is what it's evolved to. And I think that what I can do is revive this frame, and that is going to be my next project, because right now, I don't feel like going through the process of bending a fresh one. Might as well use this up while I can, and uh, I still have about eight more reed blanks to go, and uh, I'd like to build up some inventory because I think it's time that uh, I start selling these to people, and uh, I think people are going to like them. So here's what the original one sounded like. And here's what the second one sounded like. A lot more volume, it's got nicer, tighter gaps, better alignment. I also went a little thicker with the reed on it. So this one's going to end up being a shorter frame because I got to cut this out of it. And I'm going to cut as much of this, out of the bad part of the end. And uh, I think I am going to try also a thicker reed as well. So this is going to be hopefully a higher tone, maybe more mid-rangey. So we'll see. I uh, haven't decided on the reed material quite yet, but flux number three coming up. All right, here's where we got today. I cleaned up the frame, really straightened it out. I um, probably didn't have to chop it as short as I did, but I wanted to. And it did help with making it lined up again easier. I just filed less of, had to file less of it out. And then I, of course, did the relief at the end, which helped things too. So it's going to be uh, much shorter than the last flux. There's the reed for it. So I'm kind of excited for that. And yeah, so I started, I marked out the reed channel. You can see right there, ready to go. And... The gaps so far, when I go to my mark, which is right there, are going to be pretty tight. So I'm excited for this one. We'll see how this goes. Uh, this was a frame that I had given up on originally. We're reviving it. We'll see. Okay, so reed channel's been filed out. My reed has been surface prepped. I, I'm, I've been going with this uh, grinding wheel finish. I like it. Um, it's what I did here. And then some heat coloring. So I'm going with that for this one as well. And I have uh, remarked out my dimensions here. So it's going to fit like such. As you can see, the blue areas where I intend to um, sharpen like a knife. And I'm still not quite ready to veer off. What I've been doing is sharpening both sides at whatever angle. I'm just doing it by hand on a grinding wheel, but uh, it ends up being sharp like a, like a regular knife. Um, there are like a, one cut I could try as a chiseled cut, or you can, I might end up being rounded really because I, I kind of uh, hone them afterwards and like I don't keep it totally straight. So it, it ends up being more probably rounded than like a true knife blade sort of cut. But um, yeah, I'm going to do that again on this one. And uh, and then the very end here, I'm going to lob that off. That's extra. And uh, I'm going to put an extra taper on this so the trigger is not super thick and wide. So uh, let's go from here. So I'm just going to cut the part off that I don't want which is this here, regular old tin snips. 
could almost be a read for a really tiny, tiny little juice art. Maybe I should hang on to that. I don't know. All right. So I am going to just put this on the grinder, do a rough cut this side first, polishing cut on the other side after, until it's nice and sharp, then we'll go from there. Plug it in. As you can see, I'm not very fancy in here. That's okay. I'm gonna stop because it's nice and sharp, fairly even. My wrist twitched a little bit or slipped a little bit and kind of twisted. And things seem to be falling off the workbench because it's vibrating so much. So before I do too much more damage, I think I'll call it quits because we're there anyway. Although I do need to grind this taper, so we'll see. So I performed my relief cut here, got a little too close to the edge on this one. I'm a bit worried that that was going to bend over and break. So I made a second one here. I'm just kind of hoping it all mushes together. And this one's maybe a bit too far, but uh, I think overall the crimp will still work out. Uh, I'm just getting ready now to hone the reed. It is quite sharp. This would cut me. Um, so what I do now is I put a glove on. I got my whetstone here, and I just give her like such. And I just go for a while. I'm not going to film all this. This is really boring. And I just look for it to be a nice, smooth edge. And uh, keep going till it's smooth enough, and then I switch sides. Do the same thing and I try to make it nice and even so that it's a nice sharp point. And then at the end of it, I just take the fine burr off of it and just knock the very tip of the edge off with this. This I, I When I was in high school, I worked in a tool sharpening shop and uh, my main job was basically sharpening the sides of end mills. Not the ends of the end mills, just the sides. Drill bits, no way too much okay reed has been shaped and honed i just wiped it off with some uh 99 isopropanol to get all the uh, uh sharpie off i am going to give it some heat coloring try and do this before my wife gets home all i'm going to do gently heat it up with this torch And that's it. I don't want to overdo it. I just changed this propane uh, bottle on this too, so it's a lot hotter than I'm used to. So uh, how did this turn out? Let's see. Can we see this here? I don't know if you can see. We'll get a better look when it cools down. Oh yeah, that looks good. Nailed it with the blues and the purples. Right along the deck area there. Yeah, this will look good. I'm not going to do the frame, I don't think, on this one. I think I'm going to leave that one um, as a uh, steel-colored, same rough finish like that. Yeah, I think so. All right, crimp time. I'm going to grab my punch. I'm going to grab my hammer. 
and I'm going to use the anvil on the back of my vise and I'm going to smack and crimp. Get in there. All right, here's where we're at. Haven't bent the trigger yet. Uh, put some good tool marks into her, so I'm just uh, cleaning those up. I did the uh, rough grinding bit out of there, and now I'm just gonna clean up this part here where the teeth go and all that stuff, and just get the finish the way I like it going. But already with no trigger bent, we got the gaps nice and lined up and tight. That's uh, so far out of my experience with building half dozen harps, half decent sound for something that's not even balanced and uh, and bent yet. So let's keep going. Okay, we are gonna go ahead and bend the trigger here. And hopefully it's not too awkward. Ever since my car was stolen last summer, when we've gotten a new one, we've started parking in here and I have about a foot of space to work and I really want to. So let's do it. I'm going to bend the trigger here. My trusty propane torch, jewelers pliers. Ooh. Might be a bit long. We'll see. I'm gonna do my usual loop trigger or teardrop shake trigger. Let's see how she sounds. a little awkward. Usually doesn't take me this long here. Oh, I don't like that. All right, let's try this for now anyway. All right. Here it is, nothing overly different from the last one. Same kind of coloring on the reed. Not bad job on the crimp. Shorter, it's a shorter heart. You can, oops. And longer trigger, but I find it's playing okay. I decided to leave, you know, I haven't really done anything to it yet. So it's a taller trigger, but I got the shape okay. And here's how it sounds. I might keep this one. I'm not sure yet. 
only because it's you know the 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 frame that I never gave up on sort of thing and it's not totally perfect but I don't know and also I really like the blue I got on this here so we'll see we'll uh, play it for a few days and see how I feel all right as usual I clipped and redid the trigger it was pretty much the same note as this one even though it's a lot shorter and I thought we can't have that so also it was just it was a little bit more awkward to play and I, I guess I'm finding that I do like the shorter triggers so uh you know I'm, I'm basically building these the way I like to play them and I just hope that people are gonna also learn and like to play them that way too so anyway this is the way this one turned out Meow.